Yes, welcome back. Now, there are indications that the world is staring, is gearing for another global global recession. This cannot be unconnected with uh, uh, the crisis, the economic crisis that um, the Russia Ukraine uh, is brought about. Um, higher energy uh, uh, cost, uh, uh, gas component of the conversation is very key. On the show today, we'll be looking at. Um, how prepared, preparedness of Nigeria to uh, uh, a, a predicted uh, global recession. Uh, it could be a pretty bad one for us if, the, if there is a, a recession, uh, and then uh, if we are caught up in this recession as been predicted by the World Bank Group. Let's join Kelvin Emmanuel uh, via Zoom all the way from Abuja uh, to make some sense for us from this conversation. Kelvin, uh, so good to have you on the show this beautiful morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me, David. As always, thank you so much. Yes, Kevin, tell us. Tell us what, what you can make from this conversation. How, how much sense can you make? The World Bank Group is saying that um, uh, it would be difficult uh, for us not to have a global uh, recession. How much sense can you make of that when you look at the fundamentals, look at the indicators that the World Bank is putting, uh, putting forward? Uh, do you think uh, uh, we're indeed headed for a global recession? Well, you know, when you look at it, um, the World Bank um, recently published, um, IMF recently came out with a report, the World Bank came out with its own report also. Um, IMF expects that the debt servicing to government revenue is going to accelerate from 85.5% to about 92% in the year 2022. And um, the World Bank expects that um, Nigeria's subsidy, if it's not curtailed, is going to rise up to six trillion naira, which will be an effective uh, somewhere around 35% of um, the entire budget, you know, uh, which is going to equal the government deficit for the 2022 Appropriation Act if the subsidy rises to six trillion naira in 2023 uh, fiscal year. And when you consider the fact that uh, the inflation in, in the US, that is the largest economy in the world, is currently 8.4%. And you consider the fact that in Nigeria, food inflation is 18.4%, core inflation is 16.8%. I expect that in June, when the uh, numbers are published, that for me, the food inflation is going to accelerate all the way to at least 19.6 or 20%. So there, there is a crisis coming. There is a crisis coming because if you realize that uh, the U.S. stock market is currently down, and you consider the fact that the U.S. Federal Reserve is going to call off quantitative easing gradually and begin to realign the interest inflation yield curve to avoid the negative return on yield for, for capital, you see that there's going to be a pullback from the... Uh, capital markets from the property markets, and that is going to affect the flow of uh, capital to emerging market economies. You know, and I also expect that that might affect that diaspora remittances that Nigeria has relied on so very much because of uh, the short, drastic fall in foreign direct investment, both on the speculative and non-speculative end. So definitely, I think that if a recession does start in the US, it's going to spread around the world and it's going to affect Nigeria terribly considering the numbers we currently see here. I, I want to dare ask, Kelvin, is this something that is avoidable in Nigeria? Should the way policies are made sort of move in the right direction? Is this something that's avoidable? Well, we're at the last inning of the fiscal cliff, and it's going to be very difficult for you to stare the rudder of the ship away from hitting the high, an iceberg because the government has not taken precautions and has not learned anything, frankly. When you consider the fact that, in my own estimate, Nigeria does not consume more than 1.92 trillion naira in petrol subsidy on a yearly basis. I don't know where the government got this 4 trillion naira figure on a yearly basis that currently constitutes um, um, a whooping um, somewhere around 25% of the quarter of the government's budget for 2022 fiscal year. So if you consider the fact that subsidy has been a major problem for the Nigerian economy because it takes away from capital expenditure and the government has to borrow money. And you, you know, one, one interesting thing is that uh, when you have the situation, for example, and this is something that has been talked about broadly by 
a wide array of economists where the government has to compel the Federal Central Bank to print money to meet to exceed its ways and means lending that according to the um, the laws that institutes the CBM. Yeah. And you have the ways and means lending currently a little above 10%. When the law says that central bank is not supposed to print more than five percent, and you have a situation where you have so much cash in circulation and it's heating up the economy, that affects everything because inflation goes up. Yeah, the monetary policy tool inflation goes up, it affects the prices of food. Um, you have a situation where on the exchange rate end, um, non-speculative investors are not able to predict. Um, where the exchange rate is going to go and the risk of the currency devaluation is currently higher than the internal rate of return, there's a capital flight. And you've seen that in the Nigerian stock market, for example. You've seen that the participation of foreign direct investors over the last seven to eight years, um, um, foreign portfolio investors, sorry, has decreased from a whooping 53% to 13% currently. You know, So when you look at all these indicators, you begin to ask yourself if the government really has it within its past and even within its uh, fiscal um, um, strategy plan to steer Nigeria away from the impending cliff it's currently, it's currently going to hit. Fantastic, fantastic. So we, we are a lot more concerned about what we can do as a country to avoid uh, uh, the impact that this would have, uh, because uh, basically the, the impacts are staring at us right right in the face, you know, on our faces right now. What can we as a country uh, begin to do? We had just seen uh, the NPR, or the CBN, uh, NPC uh, move rates, uh, hopefully uh, to compete with global, global rates. Maybe it could attract um, F, I mean, foreign portfolio investors into, into the country again. Uh, but then some experts have said uh, that in itself would dampen Dump on the domestic economy uh, because that would increase lending rates, and by extension, uh, that means that the local economy might not have access uh, uh, to, to, to cheap monies uh, from the banks. Uh, what do you think in terms of policies? There could be a way out. We just heard about the, the Nigeria Morocco Rail, uh, Nigeria Morocco gas, gas project, which you and I talked about um, sometime on the show. Uh, that seemed to be like um, uh, seeing the light of day. Uh, better see what should we, we as a country be doing, uh, Kevin, to avert uh, this global recession, which of course uh, would not all go well for us as a people and as an economy. The, mo the memo that was approved by the Federal Executive Council yesterday in lieu of the President's trip to Madrid to meet up with the Spanish government, in line with the conversations we've been having the several months since Russia invaded Ukraine, is a good step. However, it's important for us to realize that it's going to take a bit, a while for such a huge capital project to come because you have to negotiate with ECOWAS um, countries on the right of way charges and the trade offs that we made. They have to do a feasibility study on the projects and then they have to deploy capital, and that's going to take quite some time. The immediate, the immediate solution to the problem is for Nigeria to implement and fast track his Nigerian gas master plan to raise the percentage of revenue to GDP ratio, which is currently somewhere around 7.4%, um, compared to the projection for a decrease of 0 0.4 to 7% in the fiscal year 2022. Um, also, we need to realize that having a fiscal strategy plan, the medium term economic framework where the government lazily goes to borrow money to cover for deficit. It's not the way to go. And, and here's the reason why. Um, you see, when you have, for example, the central bank violates the CBN Act and go against ways and means lending that says, don't give the federal government loans that is more than 5% of real GDP for the uh, previous accounting year. When you have a situation where, for example, the CBN tells you that they have a little over like one trillion naira in loans to um, the agricultural sector in Nigeria, and you've not seen the impact really on food production because of the shocks you have and the inflationary trend you have for food inflation. And you see like a loan impairment on the balance sheet of the central bank because the central bank has not applied the right uh, framework for implementing that. Yeah, 
you scare foreign investors away. And that reflects in the fact that in the last euro bond, the Nigerian government um, put on the market to raise $1.2 billion to pay PMS subsidy. Yeah. They raised $1.2 billion at 8.75% coupon over a 10 year period. Meanwhile, in Rwanda, the Rwandan government raised $620 million at 5.5% coupon over a seven year period. Why would Rwanda be raising money at a lower rate than Nigeria? The reason is because the risk for holding Nigerian government bond is creeping up, which means that the more the investors price the risk higher, the more in debt servicing the government has to pay, which eats into the capital expenditure and takes you back to the vicious cycle, uh, vicious cycle of the government going to borrow money to, 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 to absorb the shock. So for me, the government needs to raise, improve, it like double the revenue to GDP ratio from 7% to 14 to 15%, right? If you do that, you'll be able to cool off on borrowing money to plug the deficit in the budget. And the immediate place I see is in the government um, working with um, the Nigerian LNG to get train aids up as fast as possible to raise more revenue from gas. That's the closest way and the easiest place for Nigeria to be able to raise its revenue, revenue to GDP ratio and pivot gradually away from um, borrowing money at higher coupons in, as a solution to cover its budget and deficit on a yearly basis. That's what I see. I mean, Kelvin, it's so surprising that Nigeria's richest resources, uh, especially um, energy related, sea gas, sea oil, you know, uh, is, 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 is so much afraid and there's so much warnings about how much impact uh, the, the, the incoming uh, recession is going to have on the country. And we're wondering, can't Nigeria use this as an opportunity to beef up its revenue? Yeah, since there's a bit of shortage, uh, uh, what's it called, of gas and oil in, you know, different countries. Nigeria has this in abundance. I mean, what can we do to, or what can the government or whoever is responsible for ensuring that this works do to ensure that Nigeria can be able to use this opportunity to, you know, make its mark in the world and become a huge uh, distributor of, of oil? Well, you know, it's quite interesting because uh, the OPEC quota for um, to, um, the month of uh, May was actually um, 26,000 barrels higher than the quota for the month of um, April. And you, you have to realize that Nigeria is struggling to meet up with this OPEC quota because according to the government, there are issues with oil theft in Niger Delta, right? Um, for me, I, I think that now is the time for President Buhari, given that he has less than 12 months in office, to cement his legacy and put his foot on the ground and make sure that the NMPC that is now a private company operates as a private company. The NMPC should stop operating as an arm of the government. The NMPC is now a private company following the signing of the Petroleum Industry Bill into law. The NMPC operating as a private company can unleash the Nigerian economy. Because, for example, Saudi Aramco easily does $105, $110 billion in revenues on a yearly basis. And it's currently the most valuable company in the world, right? In fact, in the first quarter of 2022, Saudi Aramco started a trading vehicle that is beginning to compete with the likes of Trafigura Vitor, which are global oil traders, in buying crude oil from West Africa as selling on the global market for a markup or commission. That is an arm of their business. The point I'm trying to make is, the sooner the NMPC realizes, the Nigerian government realizes that the solution for it to unleash its oil and gas potential and improving the revenue to GDP ratio is putting its foot on the ground and doing a complete business process re-engineering to ensure that the NMPC unwinds and moribund infrastructure like the refineries in Kaduna and Sakota worry that are moribund and are not redeemable, sell it as crap. Do a process turnaround for gas, for upstream, for midstream and downstream, and unleash the potential. NMPC should start thinking like a business and not an arm of the government that is serving the whims and caprices of certain people that are stakeholders in it. 
the better for Nigeria. That's the solution to the problem. Please paint a picture for me. Uh, paint a picture for me and then the picture for, for Nigerians to understand what the impact of uh, another recession will be like. Uh, paint the picture for me, Kevin. The, the, the impact of another recession will be um, the government not having serious shortage in efforts because it's going to seriously limit the flow of the little capital the government is saying that's prior remittances, certificate of capital imports from um, foreign direct investment, a shrinking of flow of liquidity to the capital markets, both the equity and debt capital markets to accelerate through the inflation. In fact, the price of fertilizer is above 25,000 naira currently, um, heading to 27, 28,000 naira per um, 50 kg bag. It's going to lead to an increase in the prices of food, which is a major problem because, you know, food and fuel constitutes uh, the major um, crux of the calculation for the cost price index on inflation, you know, and that is going to erode the purchasing power parity of Nigerians and further devalue the naira. So it's a, it's a very tough balance and it's it's something that is going to wreak havoc on the very, very bad situation currently. And considering the fact that a lot of sub-nationals are not currently in good shape, we have quite a number of state governments owing salaries. They're not even in the position currently because the states have not been managed properly. They're not in a position currently to raise the minimum wage in any way. So it's going to really, really cause like a crisis. And I, I hope that it doesn't lead to an unrest. You know, because if you look at the fact that currently, as we speak, the price of a loaf of bread in Nigeria is 800 naira heading to 850, 900 naira per loaf. And a bag of um, a 50 kg bag of wheat, current, wheat flour currently is 26,000 naira per bag. Um, like four or five years ago, 50 kg bag of wheat was going for 12 to 14,000. Today it's 26,000. The price of wheat, a 50 kg bag, uh, bag of wheat flour that is used for baking goes to 30,000, 35,000 naira per bag is going to lead to serious food inflation in Nigeria and cause a lot of unrest in the country. Uh, maybe akin to what we saw during the um, COVID uh, lockdown, where there was a serious scramble for food around Nigeria, you know. I mean, Kelvin, it looks like uh, more than a double uh, whammy for Nigerians and some other developed or uh, um, developing nations in Africa, uh, if this uh, warning by experts that a global recession will hit does happen. And so with um, warning, I think the, the, um, the, the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Konjo Riala, did you know, warn at some point last week that it was going to be an impending food, short, uh, food shortage in some parts of Africa due to the prolonged, uh, what's it called, Russia-Ukraine Ukraine, Ukraine, um, conflict. Um, the recession coming up, uh, environmental issues. I mean, I'm wondering, what is it going to look like should this, inf uh, this um, recession hit uh, Nigeria? What is it going to look like for the man on the streets? You know, like I said earlier, it's going to, the immediate uh, point will be bread. Bread is the most consumed food in Nigeria. Um, Bread, in fact, has historical antecedents, very strong historical antecedents. We go back to um, the Arab Spring, we go back to 1918 in Russia. You trace back over the last 100 years, you see that bread has led to serious crisis and revolution in several parts of the world, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Eastern Europe. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you one one issue that I think Nigerian government needs to pay attention to. I think it was a couple of months ago. One of the senators, um, I, I can't remember where is Senator Guy. I can't remember the exact senator. Um, there was and there was a bill in the house. I don't know what stage it is. If it's in the second reading and it's going for hearing, or if it's in the final reading, proposed for cassava to be included in the mixing of flour in Nigeria. 
Nigeria has the highest output of cassava at 20%. In fact, I was in a meeting with a Chinese executive yesterday who was telling me that he's surprised that the only use of potato Nigerians have is flour, potato flour, which is just beginning to gain grounds at chips. And in fact, in China, most of the industrial starch they use for pharmaceuticals, for food and beverage and confectionery actually comes from potatoes. China has the second highest output of potatoes in the world at 22%, 17 million metric tons per year. And a substantial part of that is used in producing potato starch that is used for several things as enhancers, you know, as um, different kinds of um, um, inputs for manufacturing in China. Nigeria has the chance to go back to its plant variety protection law and get cassava in some kind of research and development into the formula, standard formula composition approved by NAFDAQ and SOL for mixing flour in Nigeria. This idea Nigerians have had over the last 40 years where it believes that unless it's wheat flour, the flour is not good enough. It's a crazy idea because Nigeria doesn't have a consistent output of wheat. Nigeria consumes about five to six million metric tons of wheat on a yearly basis. And it doesn't produce currently more than 120,000 metric tons of wheat. So how can a country that produces 120,000 tons and consumes about five to six million metric tons rely on a commodity that is currently a weapon for war in Eastern Europe for most of its food? The government has a chance to ensure that there's backward integration and there is a tweak in the standard formula composition for flour in Nigeria and include cassava because we have the highest output at 20% per year. It has a chance to do that. What is cassava used for? It's used for gari, it's used for chips, it's used for fufu. Um, when it's also used for ethanol production, you know, and the people who produce starch and ethanol are competing with people who produce gari and fufu and chips which is the reason why you've had the prices of uh, um, fufu and gari go up significantly over the last two years. The government needs to invest in upstream of primary production, do land development, invest in mechanization, do extension services to smallholder farmers to increase the output for cassava as a commodity and ensure that in its formula, standard formula composition approved by SO, that, that cassava is included with with in the composition to do backward integration. Fantastic. Uh, before, before we let you go, uh, let's just talk about around um, fertilizer shortage. Uh, yes, of course, uh, I'm aware that uh, we do import fertilizer from Ukraine, uh, uh, from Russia as well. And then this war or this crisis so far uh, seems to be an impedance to all of that. I'm just asking, t tell me for clarity, uh, the Dangote fertilizer uh, plant, uh, it has picked up, and we're hoping that this could cushion uh, that component of the conversation around the um, shortage of um, fertilizer in Nigeria. What are you hearing, uh, Kelvin, in, in just about two minutes? So the Dangote uh, um, fertilizer plant in um, um, Lekki currently does about 10 to 15% capacity utilization. It has a capacity of 3 million metric tons on a yearly basis. Now, we, we have to understand that in NPK, Nigeria has ammonium nitrate gas, which is N nitrate, which is about 50 to 55% of the formula composition for fertilizers. It doesn't have phosphates. It doesn't have muret of potash. Muret of potash, which is 20%, comes from Russia and Ukraine and Canada. Those are the um, three highest uh, suppliers of uh, muret of potash or potassium in the composition, which is K. Uh, phosphates, Morocco has 80% of control. Um, that is uh, controlled by, mined by OCP, uh, which is like the state uh, company for Morocco that produces fertilizer around the world. For me, this current Nigerian Morocco gas pipeline is an opportunity for the government to do a trade by butter deal where Nigeria exchanges gas in its right of way to Morocco for phosphates. Nigeria doesn't have to pay for importing phosphates. I hear that there's a ship going to bed in Nigeria current very soon that will bring in 105,000 metric tons of potash from uh, Russia and Canada. 
But con considering the current volatility and inflation in prices, this is a time for the government to be very strategic in its thinking on how it solves the supply chain for inputs. Because the reason why fertilizer prices are up is the fact that Nigeria doesn't have two of the major components for composition. And when you have a weak Naira where it costs more to import merit of potash and um, phosphates from Morocco, from Russia, from Ukraine and Canada, you're going to see higher prices that um, the blenders give you when they sell after they've manufactured from uh, converting this input. So the government needs to be strategic in its approach to supply the supply chain, to solve the supply chain issues that it currently has with the uh, MOP and the phosphates going to be the perfect place to end the conversation here speaking on issues of global recession and what nigeria can do to ensure that the bite is not very deep and hard should it happen as predicted um kevin emmanuel the development economist thank you so much for being a part of the conversation thank you for having me as always thank you so much absolutely all right we continue with more talk right here on news up after this break to join us again.